Well, Jim, this was an unprecedented project because you not only looked at the national data, but in major cities like Los Angeles, we took a closer look at the local data. What we saw here was a dramatic drop in the solve rate in 2020 and serious racial disparity in our city. What was your takeaway when you saw the data from all the other major cities like New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, and San Francisco? Was there a common thread? It all sort of lined up to give us a couple of different trends that we were able to identify. First of all, a 50-year low in terms of the rate that homicides are solved. In other words, the clearance rate. Mm -hmm. So it used to be 8 in 10 uh, in the late 1960s. 8 in 10 homicides would be cleared. Today, it's more like 50%, 1 in, in 2. Uh, but more troubling than that, Ross, is the racial disparity. The percentage chance of a homicide being solved if the victim is white is significantly higher than if the victim is black. That racial disparity, also something that we found in cities uh, around the country. So similar results in all the major cities around the country. The, the numbers uh, for the disparity, let me just spell this out a little bit. Uh, when we took more than 15,000 law enforcement uh, agencies reporting, 87% of homicides where there was a white victim were solved. 65% of Hispanic homicide victims, those murders solved. 59% if the victim was black. Stunning disparity. Yeah, and we had even more stunning disparities here in Los Angeles County that we looked into. What was the response to the overall project uh, to the national and local stories that you've received so far? Well, when you talk to police, they say, look, we are understaffed. We don't have nearly the kinds of resources that we need to be more effective in solving these things. And that there is also, uh, a, in a post-George Floyd world, an erosion of trust between communities, especially communities of color, and police departments, trust that is required, essential to solving cases. What are families doing? We have a mother here who is now helping other victims uh, by giving family support, but you found some others that are doing even more. Yeah, it was a uh, very moving scene for us in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, we met with what we thought were gonna be three or four mothers of homicide victims, and you can imagine as I'm sure you know, just from your own reporting and what you've seen in Los Angeles, there's a pain and a suffering mm -hmm. at the loss of losing a child, especially in a violent manner. Uh, but when we showed up in Jackson, three or four people turned into several dozen people who all came in with their own stories. And they are working to sort of keep the heat on police to make sure that these cases don't sort of fall by the wayside. Uh, and they're finding that in their numbers is some degree of power which helps them uh, try to get the answers and the justice that so far has been quite elusive. And Jim, I believe that's the story we're gonna see on the CBS Evening News tonight. What's coming up on Friday as well? So we have spent time uh, the last couple of uh, days documenting the problem. We've been in Philadelphia and we've been in Jackson documenting the problem. Tomorrow, Ross, what we're gonna see is in Baltimore, a solution to the problem that so seems to show so far some signs of promise in terms of traction in reversing this trend. We'll get into that tomorrow on CBS Mornings and again on CBS Evening News where we show perhaps a solution to this very disturbing problem. Yeah, I can't wait to see that, Jim. We're all looking for the solutions. Uh, also, I understand that you're working on a documentary. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. So, Ross, what we're going to do there with the documentary, and this will be on uh, CBSN, which you can access on CBSNews.com, is this deeper dive into the issues told through a lot of these people in Jackson, Mississippi. We had, as I told you, an incredibly moving time there. Um, what we did on CBS Mornings, we actually dive even deeper into in this half-hour documentary, which will allow us to touch on many of, of the points of this issue that make up this rather disturbing trend. All right. We'll look forward to seeing that. Jim Axelrod, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us.